Hi folks, this is David Fine. Welcome to Keys Moths. And what I hold in my hand right now is a box of moths that I have collected in the Florida Keys. And what these are all, these are all guys in this box, believe it or not, there are actually species that have been discovered, new species to science, new things to the United States that we've discovered through our scientific research. And what we do is we, we take some specimens and we mount them and prepare them, label them, and donate them to museums such as the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera Research in Gainesville, Florida. And it, it helps us understand our local fauna. So today's video is going to be explaining how do you prepare a specimen for scientific mounting. And so what we're gonna be doing is I'm actually going to be using a board like this, a mounting board, and I'm gonna show you how to mount a butterfly or moth specimen for scientific purposes. Guys, check this out. It, that when it comes to small moths like this, it can be really, really difficult to identify all of them. So coming up with the identification label can be tricky. And yeah, in this group, we've got some very special moths, including these Centumoida Centumades, which are actually brand new, newly recorded specimens or species in the United States. We found them only on Big Pine Key and uh, No Name Key. And actually, I think Bahia Honda, there's been some seen as well. But brand new species to the United States. We're going to be trying to figure out what the host plants are and, and, and try to find out what they what their life cycle is going on. What's going on with this bug in the Florida Keys? We're gonna try and develop more information on that. Uh, some other cool things down here, we've got a group of Noctuids and this little group of Noctuids right here are actually very special and very rarely ever seen in South Florida. And we found I think in all of our 10 years, I've only ever seen two. And then in this one night, June 10th, 2016, Big Pine Key, and I found there were hundreds on the sheet. So in 10 years of collecting the Florida Keys, we, we I think only saw one or two. And then in one night in June, 2016, there were hundreds. And I'm not sure why, don't know exactly what's going on but there was something going on with that group on that night. Now, within that group, we found this thing, which turns out to be a brand new species to science. And so that is super cool. We found out that this species here on the left is a different species than this one on the right, not just because it has a little bit of a different wing pattern, which is kind of normal. Because we sent a leg for DNA analyzing, we found out that this is actually a different species than this, and this one has never been recorded in the United States or in the Florida Keys or anywhere else for that matter. So we get to write in and try and try and describe it. So more to come on that stuff, but guys, that is the whole heart behind uh, scientific collecting. In this, we collect very few butterflies, but we're just this video is all about showing you how to prepare a. Lepidoptera specimen for scientific purposes. Guys, the species of the day is the red spotted purple butterfly. That is Lemonitis Arthemis Asterianax. And so what we're gonna do is, believe it or not, down in South Florida, we don't have these butterflies. I've actually never really collected them in Florida. I've only one specimen, it's been a long, long time. So what we did was we raised a few out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep four specimens. We're going to keep two males and two females. And what we're going to do is we're going to display one of each on dorsal side and one of each on the ventral side so that we don't have to pick the butterfly up, the specimen up to show the underside. We actually have one displayed upside down so we can show the difference between the male and female on the underside. And this is a scientific thing. I'm keeping a pair of each, a male and a female of each species, uh, just to be able to photograph, to do videos with and display. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the materials that you'll need to properly curate a Lepidoptera specimen collection. So what we're gonna do is first, we, are, we need our mounting boards and I'm a little bit handy, so I actually made some of these myself. 
but they got to have the right spacing. They got to have the right pinning bottoms. And I like using balsa wood as my surface on the top of my boards. It's, it's stable enough, sturdy enough where, you know, the pin doesn't fly away uh, when you hit it, but it's soft enough where you can put the pin in uh, without crushing your fingers. Like, by the way, you can go on to BioQuip uh, check out their website. It's the place where we get entomological supplies and you can order. They have spreading boards like this and they, they make theirs out of basswood or hardwoods or whatever. I like to just place a uh, thing of balsa wood on top. And if it ever gets too pitted by the pin marks or whatever, I just take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of lightly sand it off. Right. So anyway, uh, there's all different sizes of pinning boards. So we'll talk about how to select the right size pinning board for your specimens in a minute. But let's talk about the uh, hardware. These are insect pins. And what we'll see is you'll see these black enameled pins. And these are the pins that you would wanna use for the body, the thorax of your specimen. And the reason we use the stainless uh, enamel, enameled pin is because it's not gonna corrode, it looks nice, and, and they're a little, they're a little on the expensive side, but trust me, don't use normal like sewing pins. Like I have these just to help pin stuff down. It's easy on the fingers. I have this big plastic bead on the top where if you're trying to press down real hard through like a hardwood or basswood board with this little tiny glass head, it can like dig into your finger and we don't want to do that. Uh, so I have a few of these, but we never use these for putting the pin in our specimen. We only use our black enameled pins. Now I've got some much, much cheaper stainless steel pins, which we use for helping pin our specimens to the board, but we do not use these for the thorax because these will eventually corrode and these enameled pins will stay nice and have a better longevity. So uh, we have this pinning block. There's different size pins. I use a number two black enamel pin. You can get that at BioQuip. In fact, I will link their BioQuip's uh, website in our description uh, of, our, of this video. But you can get, I like number two. It seems to be the most universal uh, pin size for the thorax because it's thick enough where, you know, it can actually hold a sphinx moth or a larger specimen or all the way down to a blue or hair streak. Uh, but once you start getting into the mi uh, micro moths, you need something else. Now, I don't have any Minuten pins, but these, some of these are like actually triple zero size pins. And they are super, super thin diameter. And we use the triple zeros for a lot of the like paralids and small, tiny little micro moths. And that's what we'll use to pin those. And I have them labeled on this little apparatus right here, which pin is which. And we try not to confuse them and we keep the number two separate. We can keep the stainless steel separate, our sewing pin things, cheap sewing pins separate, and then our you know little tiny pins separate. Uh, finally, we have uh, up here on the top, we've got a Micron pen, which is archival ink and you can see it here. We use archival ink and we use a pretty thin diameter micron pen. And the reason we use this when we're writing our labels and we want our labels to last, we will use this archival ink because it doesn't fade very easily. It'll stay nice and dark for a long, long time. Uh, we've got a pair of scissors, which we'll need, and we need forceps. The reason we use forceps is we always handle our Lepidoptera specimens with stainless steel forceps because we, if we pick them up with our fingers, the problem with our fingers is that we have got all kinds of oil on our skin. And when the oil on our fingers touches the butterfly's wings or the moth's wings, the oils will stick to the scales on the wings and we get the, the scales will come off on our fingers and the specimen can get easily ruined. So we try not ever, ever, ever touch the specimens with our fingers. We always use forceps and there's different size forcep heads for different things. I like the spade ones are used pretty commonly for butterflies and moths. I like these really thin ones and I'll show you why in a minute and they can be a little bit harder to find. But finally, we have an X-Acto knife. There's a little tendon that connects to the hind wing 
of skippers, actually all butterflies, but certain species or certain, certain families of moths and butterflies give you a hard time of getting the hind wing into the right place. So what we'll do is we'll sever that little, um, that little tendon underneath the hind wing, which we're not gonna show you that today. Maybe that'll be a different video, but that's what we have our X-Acto knife for. Uh, we use these for sphinx moths. Sometimes that tendon can be very pesky when it comes to mounting sphinx moths. And you never know when, you know, it's always a good thing to have an X-Acto knife around. Another thing I like to have, I like to have a strong magnet around. And the reason being, if you're dealing with hundreds of pins and this thing were to ever topple over, and now I've got pins everywhere. Imagine if all of those were to spill onto your carpet, onto the tile, onto the carpet, or whatever, and they can be super, super tricky to find them all. Well, if you have a nice, strong magnet, this is like a super magnet of some sort, and you can just go around, and you can just pick them all up nice and easy, and now they're on my magnet and not on the carpet, and that is a super handy thing to have. So um, don't have to use it too often, but it's nice to have one around. This is a protom block. And the reason we have a protom block is to measure how high up on the pin we are putting both our specimen, that's that this hole is for, and that's the specimen will go at this level. And then all the specimens in your uh, in your collection will be the same height on the pin, which makes it a nice presentation. But then we also need to make sure that it's high enough to have enough space for the labels. And th these are the label uh, holes, and we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But this is a, actually a very important piece uh, to curating a nice scientific collection. Uh, finally, we have paper that we're going to use to pin our butterfly moth specimens uh, to the boards. Now, you can use regular paper. I like to use cardstock, even index card paper. And the reason being is because it's firm enough to actually hold the specimen and flatten the wings. Uh, if you use regular paper, it can actually buckle uh, with the wings. And, and believe it or not, use cardstock paper. Go get some good high gloss cardstock, the glossy stuff. It keeps the scales from sticking to the paper, which can be a nuisance. You don't want to take the paper off your wings of your specimen and have uh, your scales of your Lepidoptera stuck to the paper. So I like to use high gloss cardstock for pinning my butterflies uh, specimens to the balsa wood boards. And we cut them in different size strips. These are the strips we use to cover the wings. And these are these little tiny thin strips, very super thin, are the ones that we use to hold the, the wings in place as we're adjusting them. Uh, and then we cover the rest of the wing with these thicker strips. Also use these cardstock strips to make labels if you want to. Um, these are our labels and we'll show you that in a minute. So guys, that's all the stuff that we need in order to make a nice curated collection. Let's get to selecting our board size and then pin a butterfly or two. Okay. Here's our first specimen. This is a red spotted purple, and this is actually a female specimen, red spotted purple. And now I'm gonna pick it up, not with my fingers, because I don't wanna remove the beautiful scales from our specimen, but I'm gonna use one of these forceps. Now these are what are known as butterfly, butterfly or spade tip forceps, and you can use these very nicely, very easily to handle your butterfly. Now, what, what you wanna do is you never wanna pick your butterfly up by the outside of the wings down here. Because if you do this, the weight of the butterfly is in by the body, and if you pick it up out here, the wing is gonna bend or even kink, and because the weight of the body is all the way out, it's a little bit of a physics deal. But I actually like using these little tiny thin flat uh, forceps, and these are actually like medical forceps. And so what you do is, we don't pick it up out here, we pick it up, if you're gonna pick it up by the wings, it's always gonna be close to the body and you're gonna to wanna to use, pick it up by the, the forewing main vein in there. And when you do that, you'll have, you won't damage your specimen in any way. But even then, you still don't wanna give that much pressure, you don't wanna handle your butterfly by the wing as much as possible. So, I like to handle my butterflies 
almost exclusively by the thorax. And so you have the head of your butterfly up in the top. You have your thorax, which is the piece of the body where the legs come off of and the wings are attached to. And then the abdomen is usually covered by the hind wings when the specimen's wings are closed. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that you got to do and also remember, um, I keep you keep your butterflies as you're waiting to pin them in something where it's keeping them out of the air conditioning because if you don't, the air conditioning will start to dry out your specimen once it's dead and it'll happen pretty quickly. So, uh, you know, I, I keep, we're mounting four specimens here and I'm keeping them out of the air conditioning in those cups uh, until we're ready to mount them. Now, we're gonna mount this specimen right now. And when we do, what we do is we pick it up by the thorax. And what we like to do, I like to give a little bit of a pinch with the thorax with the uh, forceps on the thorax, little pinch. What that does is it loosens the muscles just a little bit of your butterfly. And so now you, use, you can use your forceps to spread the wings of your butterfly. And when you give that little pinch, it just lightens them up. It loosens things up and you're gonna want them nice and loose. Uh, you don't want it to dry out if you're gonna mount your butterfly. You want it nice and loose so that you have control over your wings and you can put your wings where you want them for your specimen. The next trick is I'm gonna try and show you how to do this. I'm gonna get a black enamel number two insect pin. And this is gonna be the pin that we put into the thorax of our butterfly. We have on the top there, we have our head where the antennae are coming out, out of. Now in the middle, we have our thorax and the thorax has got a nice little line running down the middle of the thorax, right there. And what we wanna do is we want to put our pin right dead smack in the middle of the thorax where that line is. And it separates the, different, the two different halves of the thorax. Then the abdomen starts right about here, and this entire piece right here is the abdomen, and we do not put our pin through the abdomen, we put it through the thorax. All right, the pin is going through the middle of the thorax, right where the two halves of the thorax separate. And then what we're gonna see is, on the bottom side, and this is a part that a lot of people get wrong, you want the pin to be exiting the bottom of the thorax, right in between the two halves where the legs are. That pin coming at, going in the middle of the thorax on the top, coming out the middle of the thorax on the bottom, okay? Now, I've got my butterfly on my pin. It looks somewhat straight. It's going in the middle on the top, coming out the middle on the bottom. And then my protom block, it's got three holes. It's got this hole, which is really shallow. That's for a label. It's got this hole, which is also kind of shallow. That's for another label. But this hole right here is deeper. That's the one that's going to measure how deep on the, on the pin the butterfly's body goes. And we, what you do is you take the pin, you push it all the way down until it can't go any further. And now you can see the pin is just right there. It's just got a little piece stuck out. All the rest of this space now is gonna be used for the labels of the specimen and to pin your specimen into your pinning bottom in the box that you'll eventually pin it into. All right, now we have our red spotted purple specimen and we've got all these boards now. Now, which board do we pick? It's actually very important to pick the right size board. And the size of the board is not as important for the, the size of how wide it is you want the you want the board wide enough to cover the you know so that the edge of the wings aren't hanging off the end, end of the board because if they're hanging off the end of the board and then something touches it right here it's going to smash the wing and it won't be good so this board is actually not big enough to hold this butterfly we would want a, a wider board like this where the wing is completely on the surface of the board and it's not hanging off the edge at all okay but the more, even more importantly than that, is what size groove 
do we use? And that is very important because you're, you're going to find that you're going to have some trouble sometimes getting your wings of your butterfly into place. And what you got to try and do, you got to try and find a groove for a spreading board that's just a little shade larger or thicker than the abdomen of the butterfly. And let me show you what I mean by this. This is actually a very appropriately sized board. Now what we want to do is we want our pin to be centered right in the middle of the space and the, the thorax or the body of the butterfly, we want that body of the butterfly to be fit right in the middle of the groove of this board. Because if it's too big, the butterfly is going to be shifting around. It's going to be twit. You know, you're trying to move the wing into place and the, the body will turn. Let me show you what I mean by that. But this is a very appropriately sized board because the thorax of the butterfly fits right into the groove, but there's not a lot of give or there's not a lot of play on either side. And that's the size that you really, really want. So we can, two problems, that, two mistakes that we can make. We can pick a board that has too small of a groove. This is a board that I would mount a micro moth on. And you can see that the body doesn't fit inside. So what would happen is if I tried to mount my butterfly on a board that the, the groove isn't big enough, the wings, they, they don't go flat on the board. See that? Because the body doesn't go inside that groove. And you want that body going inside the groove so that these wings mount nice and flat and you have a nice, nice flat winged specimen. Okay, so this board is way too small. This is a board that we would put like a micro moth or something like that on or a very, very, very tiny hair streak or blue. Uh, now I'm gonna show you one that's too big and I'll show you the problem with having a board that's the groove is too big, okay? Now, this one is going to be too big. And as you can see, there's a lot of space there in between the, the edge of the thorax and the edge of the groove. And so what you would do is when you're trying to move this thing around, the butterfly is gonna spin like this. And you'll think you're getting the wings in the right spot, in the right place, and you'll kind of start to move your wing up but then your, your specimen starts to spin and now your body's crooked and you don't want that. So we gotta use the right size board and what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our red spotted purple specimen back over to the right size board, which is this one right here. And we're gonna mount this specimen right now. All right, now what we've done is we have pinned our red spotted purple specimen in the groove up near the top and far enough down so that when we pull these four wings up into the right position, that they're not going to go off the edge of the, of the board here. That would not be good. And what we're doing is we pinned the specimen down far enough where the bottom of the thorax is actually down inside the groove of the board. But the top of the thorax is on the top of the board. And what we want to do is we want these wings... We'll use our forceps here for a second. I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna just put a little bit of pressure on this wing, and I'm gonna show you that these wings, when we push down, they're nice and flat on the board on both sides. Because if the pin, if the pin is going through the body and it's crooked like that, what it's gonna do is this side is gonna be kind of, this wing is gonna be kind of pressed down, and this side is gonna be kind of pressed up, and it's gonna be awkward and weird. And so we want the, the pins that got to be straight down through the middle of the thorax and it's got to be put straight down into the middle of this groove. And you can see the pin down there. It's almost perfectly straight up and down. And now it's time to mount our specimen. So what we did is we've cut our very, very thin strips of cardstock. And what I did was I cut them a little bit to the length off the end of the board here. And the reason I do that is because this is gonna be our strip that we use to hold the wings in place 
as we are uh, hold the specimen in place, as we are uh, mounting our, our butterfly, and making sure the wings are in the position that we want it. Okay. Now, what we'll do is we'll make sure the antenna are underneath the strip, the wings are underneath the strip, and we'll apply a little bit of pressure, just a little bit, a little bit of pressure, and I'm going to place a pin down here, a couple inches down, and hold that strip in place, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this right side. You don't want it to be too tight. This is just, just a little tiny bit of pressure, and the reason we don't want it to be too tight and we've got our stainless steel pins holding the strips in place. The reason we don't want it too tight is because now we are going to use another pin and we are going to move the antenna and the wings into the position that we want them. And if it's too tight, we're gonna break our butterfly wings or we are going to uh, cause them to, uh, the scales to come off. We don't want that to happen either. So we are going to now mount our butterfly. All right, guys, the first thing that we do, once we have our specimen in here, we place a pin, a stainless steel pin, right on the left side of the abdomen and just holding that abdomen in the position that we want it. And the reason we do that is because we're gonna start mounting the left side. And as we pull this into place, it's gonna to want to pull the body into out of the position that we want it. So that, that pin right there, it's not in the middle of the body, okay? It's on the side of the body that will hold the body in place. Okay, so now the first thing we do is we use another pin and we will put the antenna into the position that we want it. And then we usually put it up fairly hard right there. And what we can do is we can actually do both of the antenna and kind of create a nice symmetrical little V. We'll pin them in place. Now the antenna are in the position that we want them to be and they're underneath that strip. Now you don't want to put too much pressure on them antenna because they will have they'll have actually fluids inside and if the fluids dry to that strip because it's too tight then when you try and pull the strip off the antenna breaks so we don't want that to happen the next thing we need to now move our wings into position and how we do that is we just use there's there's devices and little tiny uh pinning uh apparatuses that they use i just use another pin i make sure that the tip's not bent nice and clean uh tip tip and what we do is we will use the, the top vein of the butterfly wing, which is right here. And we're not going to puncture the wing, but we're just going to use that vein and move the wing into the position we want it by, by just touching that vein and moving it like that. And, and what, what happens is the vein is tough enough where the pin's not going to, you know, it's not going to break the wing and rip it. Okay, we don't want to rip the wing. All right, now how do I know how high to move this forewing? The bottom of the wing, we want the bottom of each of the forewings to form a straight line across. Okay, and so what we'll do is I'll actually pin the other forewing real quick. I'll move this up. Okay, that's pretty darn close. So now what we can see, we can see that there is almost a straight line being formed on the bottom of the four wings going all the way across. That's how we know that there's a symmetrical uh, specimen being pinned right now. When you're pinning a hind wing, they don't have that big thick top vein, but they do have smaller veins and there's a little corner usually where these two veins right here meet. And what I do is I just push the wing into the position I want it by pushing this vein. Now these butterfly wings will scratch very, very easily. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a crease in that wing, which I don't like. We don't want creases in our wings. We want it to be nice and flat. 
Okay, we pull the hind wing up so that there's just this little tiny little V right here that forms in between the hind wing and the fore wing. And we're gonna do the same thing with the right hand side. And that one's, the, the right hand side of this butterfly is cooperating a lot better than the left. I'm not sure why, but does that look symmetrical? Kind of. Oh, you know what happened? This four wing slipped down because it didn't look symmetrical to me. Okay. So we are going to move these up. I'm just going to move that into place. Okay. Beautiful. Now that is a very, very symmetrical butterfly specimen. Okay. So now the next task is to cover is going to be to cover these wings because if we leave them exposed like this, the edges of the wings will start to curl up and the wings will not be flattened. And we don't want that. So the one thing that we do before, actually before we cover our wings, the abdomen, as time goes and starts to dry, the abdomen will droop down. And that's not what you want. You want the abdomen to stand out straight. So what I'll do is I'll put two pins and create like a little, little wedge. And the abdomen will rest in between the two pins. That's not straight. Here, let me get that straight. Just like that. Okay. Now that abdomen is now resting in between those two pins in that wedge. And it's going to be held in place nice and straight. And it'll dry that way as well. So now it's time to cover our wings. So uh, say goodbye to the pretty blue coloration. We're about to cover it, guys. All right, now what I've done is I have cut out of our cardstock two pieces of cardstock. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just place it very gently on the top of this wing. And I'm gonna place the other one very gently on the top of this wing. And what the purpose of this is, we, we just want to make sure that our wings, as they dry, that they don't curl. All right, and we want to make sure that the, the edges of the wings are underneath this paper. We don't want the edges of the wings sticking out past this paper. So take some more stainless steel pins and we are going to pin the outer edges of this piece of paper down. And what we want to do is we don't want to pin them too firm, just enough pressure to hold the wing in place. But we don't want these things like totally smashing the wing down really hard because if we do that, then when we take our pin off or take our paper off, there would be a line pressed into the wing. We don't want that. And you try not to pin it down super, super close to the wing. You want to pin it down with a little bit of a space so that there's some give. You don't want to like jam that piece of paper down on top of the wing. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I'm doing a decent job explaining it. And you want to make sure that you're not pinning through your wing. So you put a piece of pin down through your piece of paper. You want to make sure you're not putting it through the wings and there's going to be a big hole in the wing of your specimen. There it is, guys. As we were fooling around with this, this top antenna came out from underneath this piece of paper. So what we can do now, I can actually take this off, bring it back down underneath this piece of paper because the wings are being held down and we are in good shape. So sometimes we need to adjust the head a little bit, make sure it's the head is straight. We'll adjust this like this. And our specimen is now ready. All right, finally guys, what we did was we created a couple labels for this specimen. I'm Like I said, I'm using my Micron pen with archival ink. And I, I recorded the, the scientific or Latin name of the butterfly, Lemonitis Arthemis astyanax, and who it was determined by. And the second label has just some general information. You can get as detailed as you want with this. Um, but for my purposes, this is enough. 
I actually ordered these caterpillars from Shady Oaks Butterfly Farm. Uh, the host plant was Salix carolinensis, the, the, the willow that grows down here in South Florida. And the adult closed from the chrysalis on October 11th, 2021. I wrote that with this archival ink, the micron pen, is we are going to take a pin and just puncture the very, very edge of the label. And what we'll do is we will bring it up here and we will pin this. We're going to pin this into the balsa wood of the spreading board on the outside of the wing, just like that. So we know that that pin's not going through the wing or anything like that. And we're going to do the same thing with this label. We'll just kind of pin it, bring it up here. We'll bring it up here. And then those, we know that this specimen, we're not going to confuse it and forget the date, forget where we found it, forget what we fed it. Uh, any valuable information, we tend to forget things. So we put it there, we pin it there so that when we take the specimen off the board in a month or so, uh, we have our labels pre-made. And so James Adams, Dr. James Adams from Dalton State University gave me a very valuable lesson when I was an aspiring lepidopterist. You know, I had a bunch of hair streaks in, in, a, in a container and he asked me, Where, where'd you catch this one? Uh, and I, I gave him a location and he goes, how do you know that you caught that one there and not this other one? And I didn't have an answer because I didn't label my envelopes. And so now that we have our labels, now this specimen is scientifically labeled. And now the goal is to keep this board in a place where it can dry out and all the, uh, the fluids in the body will evaporate over time. And you got to keep things from eating it. So if you have some kind of like a, a box, some kind of a semi airtight thing where it can dry over time, but you can control the pests, the ants from eating it or anything like that, that'll be good. I don't want to protect your stuff. So now the, the next thing we're going to do is a lot of times when I'm raising butterflies, I actually like to keep the chrysalis shell. And so if it pupated on a stem, I'll take a little clipping of the stem and clip it off. And what we'll do is we'll just pin this chrysalis shell here. And we know that that specimen came out of that chrysalis. So when we put our specimen into our uh, collection box, we actually have as much information as possible. And we, actually, we know that this specimen was it closed or emerged from this chrysalis shell right here. And you know, that's over and above and beyond, and that's not required for scientific documentation, but I think it's a neat addition uh, to the collection. So now, what we're going to do is we are going to pin a specimen upside down or showing off the ventral side, not just the dorsal side, because as you can see, the red spotted purple has very different colorations. We got no red spots on this top side, but the bottom side has all these bright red spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this one upside down. All right, guys, so isn't that a stunning butterfly? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to put our pin right in the middle of the thorax, in between the two legs, the two sides of the thorax. And this is well, well done. And it's coming out right in the middle of the thorax on the top side. Okay, so now we're just going to literally just pin it upside down. Now it's a little, the pin's a little crooked, to be honest. It's a little crooked, but it's not bad. Now we're going to come back over here to our protum block. And we are going to measure how far up the pin our specimen goes. And it goes that far. When you're pinning a butterfly upside down, there, there are a different set of challenges. Most of it's the same, but there's a different set of challenges. The first thing is we want to make sure that we're not putting it too close to the top specimen. And we want to make sure that there's enough space for our second specimen to fit on the board properly. Okay, so now we're going to put it in the middle of our board. Put the pin right in the middle of the groove. And we're going to put our wings and antenna underneath our white strips. Same thing on this side. 
We're gonna pin that down. Okay, now our specimen is being held in place. So we're going to put our, just our door holder <laughs> on the side of the abdomen there to keep the abdomen in place when we go to turn it. And now that they're in place, well, they're almost in place. Yeah, now that they're in place, time to move the wing in place. Same thing, we've got that big thick vein that runs right up the edge of this forewing, and we're gonna use that to slide that forewing to the position that we want it. And then we can slide the hind wing same way. We use the little vein to the position that we want it. We come over to this side. We just push, we're not puncturing the wing. So you see what happens when I move the right side it, the left side starts to slide out of place. So that can be a problem. We have to pay attention to that. Again, the, the bottom of the four wings, we want to create a, an exact line going all the way across, sy symmetrical, all the way across through the specimen, okay? And then we wanna make sure that our hind wings are up into place. Does that look symmetrical? I think it looks symmetrical. Looks beautiful. When you mount a butterfly upside down, see what happens to the abdomen. It, it droops down big time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a pin and we are going to get underneath it and wedge it back up into, uh, into a reasonable position where it looks decent. And we're gonna stick the pin, not into the abdomen, but into the board underneath the abdomen. And the abdomen is now resting on that pin. Then we'll come in on the other side. We'll go down and we'll do the same thing. We'll pin that pin into the balsa wood on the other side, creating a little wedge where the abdomen rests. And now that abdomen is going to dry in a place where it looks symmetrical and it's not drooping down. And now it's a waiting game, guys. Um, we're gonna pin our, our male specimens as well, but we don't have to show you that. But that's it. Now we wait a month or so, let the fluids dry, keep things from eating it, and then we take our specimens off and put them into our specimen boxes. Okay, now we're not gonna use our red spotted purple butterflies as the test case for taking specimens off the board, but we're going to show you what it looks like when we take our specimens off the board with some of these buck moths that, these are actually from last year. So these have actually been on this board over a year. And that's just because I haven't really gotten into, um, that shows you how little I actually do mount. But these guys we're gonna take off right now for you guys. And what you can see is I created the, the data, the, the, the information label, on where we found it and the date and all that. And we raised it on scrub oak and this specimen, this female buck moth uh, was found on the, the larva was found in Boca Raton, Florida in January 28th, 2020. And the pupa closed on, on February 27th, 2020. And it is Hemaluca Maya, the, the buck moth and it was determined by myself, this is a female specimen. And then the same thing for this male. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take these guys off the board. So the first thing we do is we take our labels off and we put them here. Make sure not to mess them up. Females on top. So we'll make sure that those go there. Okay, now this is, Super tricky. Now we would want to keep them on at least a month so that the wings flatten out and everything, all the the uh, the fluids inside have dried out. And now you're left with the exoskeleton of the uh, of the wings and the and the thorax and, and the abdomen. So uh, what we want to do is we've got to be very careful and delicate as we take these pins off, because if we're not we can break an antenna, we can break a leg, we can break a wing. It's very, very, very easy to mess up 
a butterfly or moth specimen, lepidopter specimen, when it's coming off the board, okay? So the first thing we do is this outer layer of paper, we wanna get that off, okay? And let's get go from, from outside to inside. So we're gonna go with the outer, outer edge first. Look at those specimens. Very, very nice, buck moths. So we're gonna go with taking this one off over here. We get the little pin that holds the body up. We'll take that out. Being very, very careful not to mess with the uh, body. Now, whenever you're taking antenna pins off, it has to be done very slowly. Because if you twitch the wrong way, and that pin touches the antenna, puts any pressure on it, that antenna will snap and go flying, and then it'll be broken off, and you don't want to do that. So very, very carefully take that off. Okay, now we just got a few pins holding this wing covering paper down. Okay, here we go. We're getting closer, boys and girls. So now we can see our male and female buck moth. Last step is we need to take the strip off that held, initially held the wings in place. And there's one. And there's two. There you have it, guys. There's your pair. Now, next step is we're gonna take very carefully the male specimen, move it over to the box. Now the female specimen, and we only touch the specimen with the head of the pin. That's it. You only touch the specimen with the head of the pin. It's time to put our labels on. And so this is our male buck moth, and you can see the big fuzzy antenna up there that are common for Saturnid moths, is that for the males to have fuzzy antennas and the females that have these little straight antennas. And obviously the females have the great big abdomen full of eggs. But it's now time to put our labels on, and this is a block. This is called a protum block. And the idea behind this block, as I said before, is it spaces out the different things that you're putting on it. So when you put the, the, the moth or the butterfly on the pin, you wanna make sure that it's high enough on the pin to give space for both labels. And so the first hole that where it's got the greatest distance before the end is where you put your moth in and before you mount it so that it's high enough on the pin. Now you put your label on and you want to, you want to use the label that you want on top to be put first. And I like to have the identification label first. Okay. And what you do is right in the middle and you just, just put it a little, put the pin a little bit through the label. Then you come over to your block and you put it in the middle hole right there and you push it down. Now that label is spaced appropriately. We're gonna put the location and date label on, but we're gonna use this last hole right here, which will space it nicely and evenly on the pin. So right in the middle, we'll go right in the middle and we'll just poke it a little bit through and then we will Put it down there, make sure they're kind of straight. And as you can see, those labels are nice and pretty and we can be able to pin our, and we'll be able to pin our specimen right here in our box. Oh, and one further thing, guys, this is a box that is made for uh, insect collection. For the, this is a Florida State collection of arthropods up in Gainesville, uh, Department of Agriculture. And so we use these boxes to transport specimens and they've got a nice, nice deep pinning bottom, this polyurethane foam, and it's nice and firm, nice and hard. And if you press that pin down, it has a nice, lot, a nice grip on the pin. So if you're transporting the box around, uh, the specimen don't fall out of the foam and flop around and destroy themselves. But the other thing is we always put some of this a little piece of this strip of this uh, uh, pest strip inside of our box 
And actually this one needs to be changed out. It's a little bit old. Uh, but what that does is super, super, super important. If you're ever going to deal with specimens of any kind of insects, you need to have some kind of pest strip in your collection boxes because if you don't put that in there, little mites and little beetles will come in and eat your moths and your butterflies. And that's very upsetting to have a faithful beauty specimen like this and come and find only wings on the bottom of the floor because it ate the body out. It's not, not a cool thing at all. So very, very important to keep that pest strip in. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a lot, it's a cool process on mounting our butterfly and moth species for scientific research purposes. And these specimens will be going to Gainesville soon to the Florida State Collection of Arthropods. Uh, but, Let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, until I see you out in the field, uh, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.